One thing I've not taken to bits yet is the hoppy meter, so I think this video is all about taking this to bits. So this is a, a power tester, you can plug loads into it, either with these little speaker terminals which are absolutely not rated for means voltage use, or this uh, socket, this uh, universal socket. And it'll show you the current, the volt, it shows the supply voltage, and it shows the estimated power of the unit's taking. And the power factor, what it doesn't display, and it's kind of I wish I could find one that did this, it would be nice if it disp displayed apparent power, basically VA volt amps, but it doesn't. It displays the mains frequency, which wavers up and down a bit too much to be super accurate. I mean, it's I know it's only down to a, a hundredth of a, a hertz here, but um, it, it just seems that it, you know, I would expect to be more stable than that. And it displays the kilowatt hour annual power consumption, which to me is a gimmick, but I suppose since this is designed for testing small appliances and lamps, it makes sense to know how much it's going to draw after a year. This might even be used in Chinese shops for demonstrating lamps. Um, other things worthy of mention, the, the flickery display, the scanning display, to me it looks rock solid to my eyes. It's the camera sort of, it's the rolling shutter effect in a way of the camera that causes that flickering. And some of you have said, can't you change the circuitry to speed that up, to the scanning? And the answer is probably not. I'd guess that's completely in the microcontroller and it's basically putting the data out and telling which se segment is to be lit at any given time. So ultimately it's, it's all in the software so it's not easily hackable like that. So I'm going to unplug this and I'm going to open it. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open the battery compartment. Well, the battery compartment here is, oh, there we go, it is open. It was, uh, it was locked, it's open now. And the exciting thing about this battery compartment is that because this is a universal case, it reveals live electrical connections. Wow. And for a start, I can see the current shunt here. A current shunt is basically, it's a wire link that is, acts as a big resistor, and if the meter measures the voltage cross, it can tell how much current's flowing through it. And you have to keep in mind that this thing is rated up to 20 amps. I could have got a more accurate one with the smaller current shunt uh, and different software. I didn't realise that at the time. That would have been better for smaller loads. It would have been more accurate. So the mains cable comes in here. It goes up. Oh, let's take the lid off it. That's the best bet. Some of you are also asking about this, uh, if this could be turned around sideways so the socket was easier to plug into because the square pin plugs, the cable comes out and fills against the speaker type terminals. And the answer is that this is uh, not quite square. I don't think it would, uh, and I'd end up with a gap probably if I did try to turn it around because of that uh, slight rectangular shape. So let's pop the screws out and go into this. And this is the first time I've ever had this open, which is quite odd for me. It's odd that uh, an appliance or product actually remains so secretive for so long. What am I expecting? Not a lot. I'm expecting the microcontroller, a resistor chain divider to get an accurate voltage reference. There's the current shunt. I'm expecting maybe some display driving circuitry and that's about it. Is this going to come off easily? There is a hole for a USB port. I don't think there is a USB port though. And there's the holes for a USB port, but they've not got it, and, and isolation type tracks. So I'm guessing for a start, without taking the circuit board out, that uh, that's an 8-pin switch mode chip, driver chip, and this is the switch mode transformer for the power supply. Let's hinge it up. Um, am I right? I think I am right. Well, there's the opto isolator for the power supply. These will probably be uh, serial drivers for selecting which uh, display is going to be powered. There will be... There's two crystals. Why? Two microcontrollers. Is one actually... I'll, I'll give you the numbers. Note, incidentally, that the supply cable comes in, the blue loops straight out through this green wire to the neutral connection, the live comes in here, goes through that wire shunt, uh, goes through the fuse, and then goes out to this connection. So that fuse is basically in series just with the load. I think the circuitry might remain powered up. It probably would, by the look of it. It does look as though that's heading up to the sort of like the monitoring circuitry and the power supply circuitry. Those opto isolators. Why are there two? Oh, I wonder if one of them's for driving the communication circuitry at the top, the uh, USB port. 
I'm not sure I'd really have any use for USB monitoring. I suppose it would be good for long-term information. Uh, right, tell you what, just because I can't really see these numbers, I shall analyse this. I'll take a look at the numbers and see if there's anything really obvious here. There's a button. What the fuck is a button for? I've never seen the button before. Maybe I should have known there was a button in here. What the heck? The T? Is this... I haven't a clue what that's for. I hope it doesn't calibrate it or something, because I'm, I know I'm obviously going to have to press it and that will be it ruined. Oh, it might be for tearing out. It might be for removing an auxiliary. You know, if you've got a particular load on, it may actually cancel that out. Right, that has to be investigated as well. One moment, please. Hmm, that took a while because uh, there were a couple of interesting things. This chip here is quite specialist and I'm not quite sure what this is for. It's for monitoring possibly the mains waveform and provide a signal over to that. But theoretically, this chip can provide most of the information that's required. Not sure about that. But let's start at the very beginning. A slightly crappier picture than normal because it was so big that it was hard to illuminate properly and get into my usual sort of area for photographing. I'm normally used to concentrating on tiny little things. So let's start with the incoming supply, goes through this little bridge right far, this capacitor under here, and it provides uh, power to this switchboard power supply chip, the PT2210, which I found a data sheet on. Let's uh, tame that down momentarily. Uh, a generic little chip, it's got the little snubber network across it, it has the transistor inside for switching. It has the sense input with, via the opto isolator, so that's, uh, this opto isolator here provides the feedback. And... There's not really much else to say about it. It is the classic configuration here. There's the snubber network. Um, and the little transformer under here with uh, the bootstrap circuit providing power. Is there a bootstrap circuit? No, there's not shown there. But I thought they might actually be using a bootstrap circuit. There's something that is providing feedback to a capacitor across here. There is. There it is. There's the bootstrap circuit. See, I just completely missed that there. I was thinking, that's odd. Okay, so uh, yes, there is a bootstrap circuit. Um, and other than that, you know, it's just a fairly standard little switch mode power supply chip. The feedback comes from uh, TL431, this tiny little component here, which is a voltage reference chip. You set a voltage with uh, resistors, and then it will provide an accurate voltage reference back, so it provides a stabilised supply. But there is the facility on the board for extra regulation if desired. Next chip worthy of note, let's get rid of the microcontroller first. This is a microcontroller. This is, I was going to say, it's the brains behind the whole thing, but all it's doing is really taking the data and it's driving the displays. It's got some local serial memory in the form of a chip called an RCO4V, which, if you look online, it says a ferro ferroelectric memory. I'm not really sure about that, but it's a standard serial memory chip. Um, the display is driven with direct drive to probably the digit drivers, but these chips up here are 74HC164D. They are serial to parallel converters that sort of they take serial data from the chip and they'll convert it to eight bits probably those eight bits are being used to drive one complete segment and decimal point and the chip is then scanning through all the digits with the information for each digit so it's probably divided into two halves i'm not sure if it's scanning them in parallel or if it's a uh, running basically from one end to the other which would uh, either way it does mean that the chip, the digits are only on for approximately, at very best, 1 in 12, which gives the an indication of why it's causing that quite strong flickering effect. Unfortunately, that is baked into this microcontroller. Uh, next thing that's worthy of mention, let's get rid of this opto isolator. It's an opto isolator that's being fed for the main supply. It's monitoring the mains, and then it's, there's a transistor, and then it's providing a signal over to the microcontroller. But I'm not sure why, because initially I thought it might have been monitoring for the zero crossing point for power analysis, but it turns out this little chip here, which is a Cirrus Logic chip, and we'll just jump straight onto this chip then, uh, the Cirrus Logic CS5463 is incredible. This chip is designed for your power meter. And it's 
analyzes, well, where's the data sheet for that? The data sheet for that says, any energy data linearity, 0.1% reading over 1001 dynamic range, on chip functions, instantaneous voltage current and power, current RMS, voltage RMS, apparent reactive and active real power, active fundamental and harmonic power, reactive fundamental power factor and line frequency, energy to pulse conversion. Uh, noting it says line frequency, that kind of rules out this thing because theoretically, this is communicating with a serial interface between these two chips. And theoretically, then it can get the mains frequency information from that. Low power consumption, optimized sense resistor. Um, what else can I say? It is a very capable chip. It is, as I say, designed for meters. If you use it in a meter, it can either send the data to a microcontroller for processing via serial lines, or it can actually drive a little signal out to a transistor that you can program it for X number of uh, pulses over a period of time. Well, according to power, you can actually click around a digital meter. Very, very complex little chip, very special little chip. So that's it, uh, microcontroller. And this micro this uh, crystal oscillator, should I say, this crystal is a very low-key one. It's just doing that because really this is just uh, this is just displaying the data that this actually harvests. Um. It does make me wonder if I uh, used a faster crystal than that, would it actually result in faster display refresh, or would it also then garble the serial, uh, the speed of the serial communication between these two? Not really sure. There is a, a little connector here, which I'm guessing may well be for programming, because it does have... Oh, actually, you know what? Maybe it's a test one, because I see one of the lines going right up to the top here, down where the... Uh, the USB interfaces that isn't actually implemented on this. Um, but I would have thought that would have been for programming this. Not really sure. Maybe it does also program. It goes over to this as well. Um, but there we have it. It's it's not. It's what you might expect. Well, actually, it's more complex than expected. I thought it was all going to be done by a microcontroller using devious techniques. I really wasn't expecting the use of such a specialist chip. But having said that, this is mass produced for meters. So it's probably not that expensive, and it was just a good way of doing all the hard work without having to worry about uh, excess processing, and that would give very accurate power factor. Odd. Still don't know what this is then. Not sure at all. Is it just to monitor presence of voltage? It's not going to be to detect if the fuse is blown or something like that. My guess is it probably is something to do with measuring an independent uh, sort of source of the mains frequency. But as I say, that could theoretically be got from there. Not sure. Very strange. But um, that's it. Uh, now it's just got me wondering what this button is. I'm going to have to end up pressing. I'm going to put the thing back together now. And I'm going to press that button. Right, well that's it back together. And I've been playing about with the magic button. And watch what happens. Now, the first thing I discovered was that if you look at the power that's being used at the moment, this is a uh, LED lamp I've got plugged in a super flickery LED lamp. And it's currently drawing about 28 milliamps, 2.4 watts, and it, the annual power consumption is apparently about 0.9 of an electrical unit. If I press the button now, a, a, a one appears, and if I then increment that to say, Five, it seems to multiply the annual power consumption by that value, suggesting maybe that's the equivalent of five years of use. I'm not really sure. It's a bit strange. But it goes a bit further. If I then hold the button down, this display changes to UH. I'm not sure what the UH stands for. It stands for Micro Henry's to me, but that's not terribly helpful. And it does seem to have a timing reference. That also possibly explains why the uh, the microcontroller had a uh, thir what looked like a watch crystal, a 32.768 kilohertz crystal next to it. It may be using that for timing in some way. And if I press this again and hold, AEC, annual energy consumption? Not sure what that... Because I would have thought APC was annual power consumption. And if I press it again... CO2, I'm guessing that's CO2 emissions and that's, you know, X number of kilograms over a certain time. I'm none the wiser. The, all these things, APC, annual power consumption, I'll put it back to that. It seems to revert back to the original setting. And then if I push this button briefly and then I keep stepping through, it will go through that multiplier. And then it goes back to 
23, 24, and then it goes back to 1. I'm none the wiser. So, um, yes. Uh, okay. Right, so that's what's inside the hoppy, and that's what that mystery unexpected button is. I have to say, overall I'm quite impressed with the circuitry in the hoppy. It really wasn't what I was expecting, and it's a bit disappointing it has those quirks of if you put on a lamp that's basically very low power but a high it's a capacitive dropper, then it will just ignore it, but it's probably doing that just because it doesn't see it as a valid load. It is more optimised for real loads. That may even be down to the, the power meter chip actually just ignoring what it regards as being just based on the capacitance of mains wiring in a house or something like that, a purely capacitive load, which you wouldn't normally find in a home. But there we go. It's an interesting thing inside. It's quite smart. It's just a shame it's got that flickery display, but it's something I can live with for its functionality.